Hello and welcome to this virtual lecture. My name is Franziska Karlat and I'm working at the Computer Graphics and Visualization Share at the TU Dresden. In the back, you can see my virtual me, which will help me demonstrating some things during this presentation. The topic of today's talk is immersive analysis of trajectories utilizing the Unreal Engine. First, have a look at the agenda. I want to give you some broader insights into the following topics. We start with an introduction to scientific visualization, showing you the goals and challenges, especially for immersive visualizations. Then I give you a short overview of trajectory analysis. What is a trajectory? What are analysis goals? And what do you need for the visual analysis? And in the end, I present you the Unreal Engine which is a game engine, but could also be used for scientific visualization. So, let's start with the scientific visualization. Here you can see an example visualization where color and shape encode attributes of a particle trajectory. The goal of scientific visualization is to make scientific data visible. This should enable the scientists to understand and gain insight into their data. There are several challenges present. Oftentimes we have to deal with a large amount of data, therefore we require some data reduction techniques, filtering and so on. The main challenge is to create an effective and understandable visualization. This should take the human perception into account. And we want to visualize oftentimes a lot of attributes at once. But here we have to take care that we preserve readability. Here you can see an example of an immersive visualization in a 3D environment. In this case, it is a virtual reality environment. The goal of immersive visualizations is to utilize um, different 3D environments, such as augmented reality, or virtual reality environments for the visualization of spatial data. Of course, you can also visualize some information. Here we want to take advantage of the depth perception of the human. The challenge is, in addition to the classical um, scientific visualization challenges, that we have to provide some suitable user interactions for the 3D space because typically a user is not really used to interact in, in a free 3D space. There are several tasks that a user should be able to perform in a 3D environment. This includes moving around in the scene. This can be done by teleportation, or by steering with a controller, or by walking. And the user should be able to manipulate the object select them, translate them, rotate them, and even scale them. Providing some overviews and details is also important. This can be done by zooming, by expanding details, or by getting some hover information. Oftentimes, relations have to be created through linking, brushing, annotating, or comparing things. Time manipulation is also an important um, task, which includes animation or selecting certain time steps. And filters should be provided to interact with the data. For this, different input devices are available, such as gloves, hand tracking or controllers, since most of the things are controlled through hands. In this virtual reality setup, we use the headset and controller. A user wears the headset and is then completely immersed in this purely virtual environment. The user can interact with this environment by using the controllers, as shown here. And the user that is present in this environment is visualized by a virtual headset and virtual controllers as my virtual me in the back. The benefits of using uh, virtual reality is that you have a completely customizable environment that you can change for the analysis usage. 
After this introduction to immersive scientific visualization, I want to give you a short overview of the trajectory analysis domain. First, we start with the definition of a trajectory. A trajectory is a trace of a moving object. It can be represented as a series of ordered 3D points with additional attributes attached. Thus, it links space, time and object domains together. My focus is on trajectories with 3D spatial information, which are produced by airplanes, drones, fluid or particle simulations, as well as flying or swimming animals, or the movement of hands or heads of a human. Everything that can move freely in 3D space. The goal of trajectory analysis is to analyze the movement. Finding patterns and defining behaviors based on this tra uh, trajectory data. This follows a general workflow, which includes the raw data collection, from GPS tracking or simulations, then pre-processing the data, which includes cleaning, smoothing or data reduction, as well as semantic enrichment. The data then has to be managed somehow. It needs to be stored, indexed and retrieved again. After this, oftentimes some automatic approaches are applied, um, summarized in the trajectory data mining field. This contains classification, pattern mining, as well as behavior analysis, outlier detection or predictions. But there are also some not automatic approaches like the visual analysis, which visualizes the data and relies on user interaction for the analysis task. And each field has its own research field because it's huge. The visual analysis of trajectory is oftentimes like investigating wool balls. So trajectories heavy overlap since they are the um, complete trajectory over a whole time span and a subject could visit multiple times the same place in space. The solution to this is data reduction through filtering or suitable user interactions for selecting parts of the data set. And here we have a prototype um, that were presented in the past. It is self-coded based on OpenGL and provides trajectory retrieval based on the similarity to a query trajectory. You can see the query trajectory and the filtered data set as well as some additional overview of the filter result. The learnings from this prototype were that everything was implemented myself, so I learned a lot about the rendering pipeline, but it was a slow development process. And adding features like an engaging environment or sophisticated lighting is only possible with a lot of effort. And yeah, this does not really contribute to the prototype um, purpose itself, but it really is important for an engaging user um, interaction so that even scientists and as well as a broader audience could be um, interested in using this prototype. Therefore, I want to present you a way to do this with a freely available game engine. And this is the Unreal Engine. It is a game engine that is developed by Epic Games with the possibility of contributing to the source code on GitHub. And we're currently at the version 5. The game engine itself provides a sophisticated rendering pipeline, physics simulations which are force-based, support for multiple display and uh, controller devices, as well as debugging tools, which are very helpful for the development process. It is tailored for the use of multiple industries that include the game industry, movies and architecture. Here 
you can see an example of what can be achieved with the Unreal Engine. It is known for its photorealistic and interactive 3D environments in real time. And this makes it interesting for interactive scientific visualizations as well. It comes with an editor that has every tool that you need to create a 3D scene. Here you can see um, the editor with an overview of the scene from a different angle right now. And yeah, some of the tools already. You have a landscape editor to edit the whole landscape. There are 3D modeling tools to create the object in the scene. We have material and shader editor to create the appearance of the objects. There is a particle system available to create effects. And yeah, of course you can um, code the language, which is either done by visual scripting or by C++ programming. And this is also a key feature. We have this blueprints, which is a visual scripting language of Unreal. And it allows for scripting using this visual interface, which is very fast. And it is especially used for, for creating the visual representations of objects, modifying some animations or uh, giving them some interaction possibilities. And it is also useful for handling all the user interactions. But blueprints are slow. So you should uh, know when to use C++ for pre-processing of large amount of data as well as computation heavy calculations. And this can even be done in separate threads. So knowing when to use what is very important. The Unreal Engine for scientific visualization is interesting because you can benefit from the state-of-the-art rendering techniques, tools for creating appealing 3D environments, as well as interfaces for handling different input devices. This allows you to create engaging um, interactive environments very fast. You have a huge community which will provide new developments as well as free tutorials or ask, answer questions very fast. And you can even customize the engine source code if you need it, but of course it's um, the easiest way if you just can rely on the available rendering functions. And thus you can focus on creating this engaging interactive visualization. And this can also be done pretty fast. This is not the only project that um, considers Unreal Engine as a basic. There are a lot more and I, if you are interested I can give you the links to them as well. So now we had a look into each topic, so let's combine them together. This virtual environment is already the basic of the upcoming prototype for immersive trajectory analysis. As you already saw, you, um, there are some basic user interactions present. There is a loading of data sets, which is done asynchronously, using C++. You can, uh, the trajectories are visualized using already available rendering techniques, which is done through instant static meshes. You can interact with the data sets by resizing or moving them, which is implemented through blueprints. You have this engaging environment where a user can get used to VR in a playful manner by interacting with the objects provided, such as some cubes, just to get a feeling of how to interact with the environment. And there is also a trajectory generator, which uses the built-in force-based particle system Niagara. You can see it here on the table in the back. This can be used to create some random trajectories, or in this case, there are some particles following each other. Of course, uh, this is not the whole thing. We plan to provide a binary format for loading, for easy expansion to other datasets, 
as well as filter for exploratory trajectory analysis. And it, this environment should also be used to enrich the trajectory semantically. With this, I want to thank you for your attention. If you are interested to see your trajectory data in such a virtual environment, feel free to contact me. With this, again, thanks and bye.